the screen test for Gemma Craven, making her film debut in the most terrifying circumstances, really. But her test was so good that we took the decision to show to the press when we announced the choice of Gemma Craven. Not something special, but just this, that we knew was right. training, she'd appeared in pantomime and at the Bristol Old Vic. But this was no ordinary film debut. Gemma found that she was acting with some of the biggest names in films and theatre. Notably, of course, her leading man, Richard Chamberlain, and Christopher Gable as the Prince's loyal man-at-arms. Position, sir. Position. Then there was Dame Edith Evans, the age of 87, dancing her way into the slipper and the rain. Annette Crosby bringing a unique touch to the fairy godmother. You like that? So do I. Sit down, dear. Don't do that. If I always go by the brown parts for the land and the blue parts for the sea. Who's that? First Lord of the Navy, sir. Have we got a Navy? The Royal Barge on the lake. Oh, yes, yes. Well, remind me not to travel in it again. Margaret Lockwood joined Kenneth Moore and Michael Horton. With flowers from my garden. Stolen flowers. Oh. I say yes. I say you stole them. Seemed to me to be totally professional. She, she picked up the technical side of filming instantly. Always was on a good energy level. Always worked wonderfully well. She really looks at you. She really listens. Um, I think she's amazing. I would never have guessed it was her first film. Gemma's first filming was to be in Austria, at Werfen, a very imposing-looking castle, sitting a thousand feet above the road and providing all sorts of transportation and communication problems to the crew. Built in 1077 and never captured, 
The Verfen could only be reached on a steep incline which defied the gears of ordinary cars. Gemma there taking a well-earned lunch break with Richard Chamberlain. Indeed, it's been estimated that during the whole making of the Slipper and the Rose, throughout all the lunch breaks, there was a total of 13,412 ham sandwiches which were consumed. Richard had a lot of dance training to do, too, to prepare and to get fit, and he had a hard and brilliant taskmaster in Mark Bro. There you can see them rehearsing together now. Mark Bro had worked with the Sherman Brothers many times before. Mike Connor, the Sherman Brothers' manager, said, there is nobody in the world who would be a better choreographer for this film than Mark Bro. And Mark Bro said yes. said a film star's life is a pampered one, which it looks as if he's just done 15 rounds with Muhammad Ali. But remember good King Phineas, saintly, kind and wise, he did nothing ignominious, yet beside these noble brutes and knaves and drunks and skunks he lies. Ho, 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 what a comforting thing to know. There's a pre-arranged spot in the family plot where your royal bones will go. Yes, I'll be slipped into the beautiful family crypt. Ho, ho, he, what a comforting thing for you to see. Ho, 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 what a comforting thing to... Ho, 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 what a comforting thing to... Ho, 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 what a comforting thing to know. In any musical, the actual singing, the actual perfect recording of the numbers, has to be done separately from the actual filming of the numbers. Obviously because people are racing around and you can't catch every word they say perfectly. And the Sherman brothers were there to listen to them, with musical director and arranger Angela Morley. And so, in between takes, down the road at Anvil Recording Studios, Richard Chamberlain, would join Gemma to record some of the songs for the Slipper and the Rose. Particularly their love ballad, the first song that the Sherman Brothers ever wrote for the score, Secret Kingdom. Secret Kingdom that you see Should the make-believe become reality great deal of work, not to mention all the other accompanying activity as well, has to take place before a song in a studio becomes a song on film. What is my life to me without my love? 